In addition to numerical information, we can also create variables that store text information. And we'll work with text in a different way than we work with numbers. Text information can be individual characters, or it can also be a group of characters that we put together to form a string. This term or concept of a string is very essential part of programming to understand. When we want to create a string in MATLAB, we're going to put single quotations around the characters that we want to group together. As part of this video, we're going to have a look at in MATLAB how you can group together types of information. So for instance, here we're just going to be looking at text. But in the future, when we get to looking at audio signals, it'll be very important to understand how we can group together numbers, because that's the way that we'll represent audio signals in MATLAB. So let's take a closer look. Let's have a look at several examples of creating variables that are going to store text information or strings. I've said before that we're going to use single quotations when we want to designate some information as being text. As a simple example, let's say we wanted to assign the individual character of A to a variable with the name of X. We would write a statement that looks like this. And I can execute this command by pressing return. Here what we've done is taken the value of A, the text character of A, and assign it to a variable with the name of X. Keep in mind, even though we're just working with text in this case, the variable name is something entirely different than the variable value, just as it was with numbers. Also, pay attention to the fact that the statement we wrote previously a, that's in single quotations, this is different than the one where we leave off the single quotations. In this case, because we just have A by itself without the quotations, MATLAB is going to assume that it should look for a variable with the name of A, rather than trying to assign the value of A to the variable X. In fact, this will give us the error because we don't have a variable with the name of A. Let's look at another example here where we create a variable Y. In, th in this case, rather than using an individual character, we're going to put together a combination of characters to form a string. So how about A, B, and C? Three individual characters, all within these single quotations, and assign that to Y. Now we've got a string of text characters. The next example will be where not only do we use lowercase letters, but combine things like uppercase letters and symbols. Here's a classic example of hello world. So we'll put in uppercase H, lowercase e-l-l-o, -L -L -O, a space, and world with an exclamation mark at the end. This is a command that can demonstrate in almost any programming language some very basic functionality, how to create a string and assign it to a variable. So here I've used letters, I've used symbols, and I'll even point out that I left a blank space in between O and W. This blank space, when we use it inside of single quotations, is actually a character unto itself. So if I were to leave that off, you'd see that we end up with something different. So we need to use that blank space wisely, and it's actually a character too. So keep that in mind in the future. That'll come in handy. Let's look at then using some numbers as a string. So here I'll create another variable and assign to it two inside of single quotations. Here what we've actually done is created a variable that has the value of two that's text. This is different than the value of two that's a number. Text and numbers are different. To prove this, we'll go through a simple example. Let's do two plus two. So here, I'm going to press return. We end up with something different than we would anticipate. We end up with 52, right? So something else is going on rather than just simply two plus two. We're putting in a different value for that string or that text of two. Let's move on and look at another example. This is how, if I clear this off, this is how we can actually group together individual characters. This process is called concatenation. So the new term here for programming is concatenation, putting together separate characters. So I'm actually going to use new symbols here, the square brackets. These are used for grouping things together, combining things together, 
or concatenating things together. So I'm going to put in separate individual characters. First up is A. I'm going to separate here, and I'm going to put in B, using the comma here to separate the different individual characters. Now, for readability's sake, I've inserted these blank spaces. But in fact, you'll note when I execute this, we don't really have the blank spaces. So I get this result, A, B, C. I could have just as easily removed these things and end up with the same exact result. So as long as the blank spaces are outside of single quotations, MATLAB will ignore them. As another example, we can concatenate, we can group together, not just individual characters, but actually strings by themselves. So here's an example. Let's create another variable. And I'm going to use the square brackets for concatenation. And now put in here a string, E, F, G. And how about even the number two, just to show that this works not just with letters, but also numbers and symbols. Put the comma and put together, how about four, and even the pound sign. You can use square brackets at the end. That's absolutely necessary to say what exactly it is we are grouping together or merging together. I'll execute this one. See that we've put together this long string of the characters. We have two separate ones that get combined to one thing. Besides just typing in here the value of the strings, we can also use information that we store in variable names. Just as many times when we've taken numbers and stored them in variables, then we can use the variables in mathematical expressions. We can do a similar kind of thing with strings. So let me create another variable, str1, string1, and let's assign it the value of hello. What I like to do is concatenate this with the string of world. So here, we'll do string concatenate. Now what I'm going to do is use the variable name, str1, concatenate that with world. Just as before, when I use a variable name in an expression, what MATLAB is going to do is when it goes to execute this command, it will substitute in the value that's stored in the name of this variable in its place and then execute the rest of the command. So I'll put in hello here, combine that with world. So here we've put together the string of characters in this horizontal line, hello world. Another example of how we can group things together in a slightly different way is going to be to create a column of these characters. So to illustrate this, I'm going to make one slight modification to the previous command. Here, I'm going to still use str1. Instead of using a comma, I'm going to use a semicolon. Here, what the semicolon means in this command is instead of putting these two things side by side, hello world, nice horizontal line, what it means is take this string, put it on top, and then go down to the next line and put in then our other string of world. So when I execute this, we can see that we've got one string on top and one string on the bottom. This concept of concatenating things together and grouping them together in different ways, in different configurations, is very essential to understand and will be the foundation when we move forward to looking at how we can store audio signals and represent them in our programming language. This is going to be the concept of an array or a matrix. And it's going to be important to keep in mind whether things are going in the horizontal direction or the vertical direction. So let's continue on and do a similar kind of example. Instead of using text, let's move back and work with numbers and see how we can group them together and organize them together in arrays.